Coming up next, it's a lightweight championship fight between Rafael Dos Anjos and Donald Cerrone. lightweight contender making his way to the octagon and looking to leave as the new undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world. He has bided his time waiting for this title shot. He's got the winning streak. He has the quality of opposition. Now he's fighting the number one guy in the world. He believes he's the best. Now his opportunity to prove it just a few minutes away. tonight he can take his career to the next level and start to be mentioned with the goats the hall of fame types for now he'll have to settle for ufc lightweight champion we will see how it goes for him tonight in vegas and now our tail of the tape for this lightweight scrap cerrone is two years his senior he is five inches taller he will have a three inch reach advantage all right, we send it inside the octagon to the veteran voice, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. And now, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the sold-out Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC lightweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer holding a professional record of 36 wins, 16 losses, one draw, and one no contest. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting the challenger, Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And now, introducing the champion, Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a grappler, holding a professional record of 30 wins, 13 losses. He stands five feet eight inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC lightweight champion of the world, Rafael Dos all right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, and a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, the back your corners, come out fighting. And with that touch of the gloves, we are underway. versus Grappler. It doesn't always play out that way, but given what these fighters said to us on Thursday, the game plans seem pretty clear. They're very clear game plans, but which one of them is able to implement the game plan most effectively? The Grappler will try to get forward, get close, try to secure takedowns. He's even willing to pull guard to make sure that he is in the Grappler situation. 
The striker needs to stay at space. The striker needs to maintain distance and fight behind that beautiful jab he possesses. Beautiful strike. Plans the right hand. Oh, vicious kick to the outside of that lead leg. You gotta start checking these, these guys. Baby. Check these kicks, or you're gonna be limping around the octagon very short. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. All right, going for the early takedown. He gets it, so no surprise. He wanted to get this fight to the ground, and that is now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. But now DC trying to isolate an arm. Yep, he's using the Kimura. And this might just be a matter of time. Just over three minutes to go in our first round. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Bob. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Oh, his opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen Real is a good ground and pound fighter. This young man is as good as any you've ever seen. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head like through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground tonight. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. The strikes continuing to pile up. 27 total strikes have landed for Donald Cerro. Oh, and he lands a punch there. Good connection by him on that. Great connect. So fast, so accurate. Watch the ability to land anywhere. we got to whip his hip into that kick. He's looking to land the right just out of range. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those leg kicks. Oh! He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Oh, he might be out. Now goes in and secures the takedown. job at least staying upright on that nice jab by him there he's going nose hunting tonight huh yeah he's great with the jab and not only as a setup he really is trying to get damage off every time he throws his punch great punch all right single collar tie now 15 seconds to go. Big kick lands. First round winding down here. Continues to mix it up, going to the head, mixing in some body shots.
right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. Round two is on the way. Beautiful body kick. Cerrone gets caught with that punch. Not the easiest guy in the world to hit, but he got caught there. Oh, now he stuns him beautifully with the left hand. The left hand is so accurate. He's so educated. He's so able to fight from both fighting stands. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight, but this is not a combo meal, right? No three-piece, oh. no soda. It's one and done more often than not. John, don't you come to me without a combo. I want the <laughs> whole platter. Give him the whole platter, young man. Put some punches together. Make this guy take the whole thing. Give him more than one strike. You have now found a set of punch. The jab is landing consistently. Find something that's going to go behind it. I'm trying to double up on that jab. Nice punch by Rafael Dos Anjos. Stuck. Wow, actually got the takedown. So 52 total strikes. He's at guillotine. Oh, beautiful counter there as he gains the side mount and try to get out of this guillotine by potentially attempting a Vaughn flu. Wow. tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishes fights. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there he is, the UFC lightweight champion, and I'm not sure any 155-pounder could have held up under the onslaught here tonight. He wins the belt by way of submission. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Rigliotta is going to stop this contest at 1 minute, 11 seconds, in round number two. For the winner, by submission, and still the undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, well, many argue it's the UFC's toughest weight class. It's one of the more difficult belts to defend, but he certainly did just that here tonight. Congratulations to the undisputed UFC lightweight champion, your winner by submission. And now all that's left to do is to celebrate with the corner. Big finish and a big result.